You're listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. Today is Thursday, February 8th. In Washington, D.C., left-leaning religious and civil rights leaders spearheaded by Rev. Dr. William J. Barber II and his co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, Rev. Dr. Liz Theo Harris, have initiated a significant 30-state campaign aimed at mobilizing over 15 million poor and low-income voters for the 2024 election. The campaign, which seeks to combat the political marginalization of economically disadvantaged communities, will feature a series of direct actions, including a National Day of Action across over 30 state capitals and a major rally and march in the nation's capital. Highlighting the urgent need for systemic change, Barber emphasizes the campaign's commitment to advocating for health care for all, affordable housing, a $15 minimum wage, and fully funded public education. The campaign also focuses on training thousands of volunteers to engage infrequent voters, particularly in battleground and southern states, underlining the importance of voting based on principles that support the poor and lift low-wage workers out of poverty. The initiative reflects a broader call for a political resurrection that prioritizes the needs and rights of the poor, challenging both the misrepresentation of economically disadvantaged groups and the political inaction that has historically sidelined them. During a Brooklyn town hall, New York City Mayor Eric Adams drew a controversial parallel between himself and Jesus Christ, attributing criticism of his tenure to the diverse appointments he has made, notably highlighting the significant number of minorities in key city positions. Adams, in emphasizing the diversity of his administration, rhetorically asked if New York City had ever seen such representation, linking the backlash he's received to his efforts in making city leadership more reflective of its demographic makeup, which is notably diverse according to the 2020 census. He compared his actions in appointing minorities to Jesus' cleansing of the temple, suggesting his mission was to, quote, turn the table over at City Hall by introducing groundbreaking changes, including appointing the city's first woman police commissioner of color, among others. Despite not directly specifying the sources of the hate he mentioned, Adams has faced challenges, including handling the migrant crisis exacerbated by external pressures and a rising crime rate, all while maintaining a strong connection between his governance and his Christian faith, advocating for a balance between religion and government without compromising his personal beliefs and their influence on his leadership. Shane Mernon, an Oklahoma elementary school principal and drag performer known by the stage name Chantel Mandalay, has resigned from Western Heights Public Schools in Oklahoma City. His departure follows controversy over his past as a drag performer, despite the district's prior awareness of his arrest record and involvement in drag. Oklahoma State Superintendent Ryan Walters announced Mernon's resignation as a victory, citing parental concerns and emphasizing that drag performers should not work with young children. The controversy was ignited by conservative influencer Chaya Rachik, leading to an ongoing investigation into the district's hiring practices and a broader stance against drag queens in classrooms. Mernon's educational career, spanning over 25 years with commendations from previous supervisors and his participation in drag events and community contributions, were overshadowed by the backlash, highlighting a divisive issue in Oklahoma's educational and social landscape. Fuller Theological Seminary, a California-based evangelical academic institution, terminated the employment of Senior Director Ruth Schmidt over her refusal to endorse the seminary's statement of faith, particularly its views on LGBT issues and sexual ethics. Schmidt, who joined Fuller in 2020 and initially signed the statement in 2022 under financial duress, expressed a conflict with reaffirming a commitment that she felt could harm the community she serves. The Statement of Faith mandates abstinence outside of heterosexual marriage, a stance Schmidt found incompatible with her convictions. Fuller's spokesperson emphasized the importance of adhering to community standards for all members, stating the institution's expectation for conformity to its biblically-based sexual conduct policies. This incident highlights the broader conversation and tension within religious educational institutions regarding adherence to traditional doctrinal stances amidst evolving societal views on sexuality. Fuller's president, David Emanuel Goatley, remarked on the seminary's ongoing deliberation around issues of human sexuality, underlining the intention to foster civility and hospitality even amidst disagreement, while a federal court ruling upheld Fuller's right to enforce these standards without jeopardizing federal funding. 
The city of San Diego took divisive legal action to close the Ocean Spa Massage Parlor in Kearney Mesa due to allegations of prostitution and disruptions caused by lewd noises to a nearby youth Bible study group. Following an investigation that lasted over 125 hours, which revealed instances of spa employees offering sexual services to undercover police officers and the presence of nearly 1,300 online sexual ads over five years, the city is seeking over $100,000 in civil penalties. The operation, described as a, quote, sex shop masquerading as a legitimate business, prompted complaints since 2018, including inappropriate activities in cars and noise disturbances. This crackdown comes amidst broader concerns about prostitution and sex trafficking in the area, exacerbated, according to a local business owner, by the recent repeal of a law banning, quote, loitering with intent to engage in prostitution. San Diego Police Chief Nislet emphasized the significance of community complaints in these investigations, highlighting efforts to restore peace and civility. Governor Newsom, while signing the repeal, cautioned about its implementation and pledged to monitor its impact on crime and prosecution trends. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of Kentucky has issued an arrest warrant for Jordan A. Fouts, a 39-year-old former Catholic school teacher at St. Stephen Martyr Catholic School in Louisville, on charges of distributing child pornography and obscene visual representations of child sexual abuse. Fouts, who taught junior high religion, is accused of manipulating yearbook photos of students by photoshopping their faces onto nude images of minors and distributing these materials to an undercover law enforcement officer. If convicted, he faces a significant prison term, a hefty fine, and supervised release. The Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Louisville, under the Most Reverend Shelton J. Fabre, expressed commitment to cooperation with law enforcement and support for the school community. In response to security concerns, the school has taken down its Facebook pages featuring student photos and is taking measurements to enhance campus security, including rekeying buildings and considering scanning for electronic devices, as communicated by Principal Stephanie Longshore, who also emphasized the importance of returning to normal school routines for the children's healing process. A recent study by LifeWay Research reveals that a significant majority of evangelical pastors in the U.S. are opposed to sports betting, with 55% viewing it as morally wrong and only 13% supporting its nationwide legalization. The survey, involving over 1,000 Protestant pastors, indicates a strong ethical and religious basis for their opposition, particularly among evangelical, Baptist, and non-denominational pastors. This stance is rooted in biblical principles, advocating for prudent financial stewardship, and highlighting the societal repercussions of sin, including addictive behaviors like gambling. Despite the Supreme Court's 2018 decision to overturn PASPA, leading to increased legalization of sports betting across various states, pastors warn of the spiritual and societal dangers posed by gambling. They argue it fosters covetousness, idolatry, and undermines biblical commandments, with significant negative outcomes such as addiction, divorce, and financial distress highlighted by religious leaders like Dr. Richard Land and Pastor Mark Creech. The controversy underscores a deep concern within the evangelical community about gambling's impact on moral and social health, echoing broader debates about the role of government and the ethical implications of gambling. Thank you for listening to the Christian Post Daily Podcast. We encourage you to follow the show in your podcast player of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or third-party podcast players like Overcast and Pocket Casts. You can also download the Edify app for free and listen to all the podcasts on the Edify network by clicking the link in today's podcast show notes. We would also appreciate a five-star rating in Apple Podcasts and Spotify to help us reach a wider audience with the Christian Post daily podcast. You can also subscribe to our daily newsletter and get the top headlines delivered to your inbox by clicking that link in the show notes as well. Thank you again for listening to the Christian Post daily podcast.